And then I'll also do the live transcript. Thank you. Um, so thanks for whoever put together the minutes. Shaya, was that you? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I was running late today, so I was like, oh, I have to get something on the minutes. And then I look and there's stuff there. So thank you for that. Um, do you wanna do you wanna lead us a little bit today, Shoya? That'd be great. Okay, I, I can try because I I've never done that before. So it'll be great, <laughs> and we can lead together. <laughs> okay, yeah. So the first topic is as we've discussed before. Um, uh, like should we um, move this call um like a couple of hours earlier? And I think um. One of the thought is maybe try to uh, spin the Asia Pacific community by itself. I'm not sure, um, but um, especially as uh, Liang has mentioned that, uh, like countries like Japan is especially late for them because they are even uh, one hour later. Um, so uh, I'm thinking of. Um, um, maybe we should at least um, move this forward for two hours because um i think for next meeting is it comes to the daylight savings and uh, it will be one hour um yeah we have daylight savings time we go, we go backwards an hour this week uh, this weekend yeah that well. means that means if we want to make it friendlier for uh, like folks in japan we want to move it even more early. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think the idea and show you, I'm just <clears throat> thinking about how Ruth is running the Chaos Africa meetings, that it's just, it's friendly for folks in Africa. And I think- Time-wise, yeah. Yeah, time-wise. And I think if we really want to build community in Asia Pacific, having it friendlier time-wise, as you point out, for Asia Pacific is a really, yeah. really good idea. Yeah, yeah. Um, I also had put in here, it's, I don't know what you think about everybody on this call, but, you know, really everybody that attends the Asia Pacific call is from China. So perhaps we run the Asia Pacific meeting in Chinese to start. I don't, it's just a thought. Well, if the goal is to be. I, also I think so, because before I knew. Yeah, please. Go ahead, you. I was just gonna say I don't know how many. I don't. Uh, Joya mentioned Japanese people as well. I know. Or Japan. Yeah. So I just didn't know if the what the Chinese speaking characteristics are. Yeah, I'm also okay with that because we. I think we can switch the language type once we found some new new guys come here from Japan or from other guys uh, yeah. from other countries. So until then, we can switch to speak in English. Yeah. 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 That was my thought. I mean, it just it might it just might help kind of um, just coordinate the meeting a little bit better to at least start it in Chinese. And then to your point, Yahui, if people from, say, India or Japan join, I think it could switch back to English, perhaps. OK. So but, are we set out uh, like uh, to move it two hours earlier? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we can I think Sean can just move the community calendar meeting yeah i can do that right now if it, you, do you want it to do so two weeks from today yep you want it to be so it will be 7 p.m you mean two hours earlier uh it, no yeah. if i move it two hours earlier today uh, I'm, I'm moving it two hours earlier after daylight savings time so yes it will be, it it'll be, still be 6 a.m. here. And uh, 8, 8 a.m., yeah. 8, 8 p.m. Yeah, it 8 will be 8 p.m. I just moved it to 6 a.m., so should I move it another hour, a third hour? Ah, uh, I see. You could see it probably on the calendar. Yeah, you can see it on the calendar now if you look at it. I just want to make sure I'm, I did I move it two hours before this time, two weeks from now which will be after our daylight savings times clock has rolled a second yeah it's 8 p.m uh, after daylight saving okay is that still too late Do you want me to move it even earlier 
uh, it's okay for me. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, this is okay for for I mean, others. Yeah, I mean, you should move it to one. It's okay. It's a, um, I put the participate. So I don't know how you all see it right now. So Liang, do you see it on the calendar? I think Jaya said it was eight. That makes it eight p.m. Okay. Um, so, but but I'm suggesting if you want it to be even earlier, we can. That's an hour earlier. Yep. Eight p.m. still sounds kind of late to me to be doing <laughs> this kind work. of work. <laughs> <laughs> well, this you know this kind of work like yeah. I can do grading at eight p.m. But you know if something with requiring nominal creativity uh, is harder. <laughs> Well, let's just keep it here and show you if you want to change it to an hour earlier, just let Sean know. Okay. Uh, so uh, another thing I want to make sure is um, if I want to record the meeting. Uh, I'm sure. Yeah. I, ju I just need to click the button because it's saved on, on the cloud, right? That's correct. Yeah. And do you have administrative? Uh, Zoom um, administrative? Do you have the login? I, I, I think I had that before, but I, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, we can make sure you get the login. Okay. Yeah, I'll get that too, Shoya. Okay. Um, and then I guess the only other thing, Shoya, is we need to, so we use the Chaos Asia Pacific meeting sometimes to make sure that we are like talking about things that are happening in the chaos project and that that's understood. You know what I mean? That there's like a cross communication. And so should, do you think that you and I, or you and Elizabeth, or you Elizabeth and Ruth, do you meet with Elizabeth every week? Shaya? Um, we, we don't meet every week, but uh, things, Ruthie and I are working on the handbook, so we sometimes we think on that, but not the community stuff. Okay, maybe we could. I'll talk to Elizabeth, and we could. I don't know if she's on right now, but we could also think on the community stuff to make sure there's yeah. kind of cross collaboration there that we don't lose any conversation there. And I mean, we can use Slack as well, but it might yeah, be sure. to have that as part of your your biweekly meeting. Yeah. Um, and um, yes, I think that could be a thing uh, together with Ruth. Yeah, that seems to be the most sensible time. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, and um, so, if if any uh, everyone is okay with this uh, schedule. Another thing I'm thinking about, um, especially uh, this Chaos Asia Pacific biweekly meeting, I'm wondering if we can like build some connection with the To Do Asia Pacific. Um, that's a monthly call, but maybe we can, uh, like I wrote, like I wrote here, <laughs> maybe we can alternate the call with that to do call and. Um, when is the um, to do call? Do you know? Uh, you mean the time of that to do Asia Pacific call? Yeah. Yeah, you said it's monthly. Oh, yeah, it's monthly. It's scheduled um, on every. Um, I think it's the last Monday of every month. Okay. Uh, of yes. Yeah. So for is it um, like a, is it similar to the time that you have that we have now? No, it's it's uh, three p.m. Uh, my time. So, but I think we can. Uh, I haven't talked about this with Anna, but um. I think we can coordinate on that. So I, I really like this idea. For those of you that don't know, 
the to do group is a is a Linux Foundation open source project mm -hmm. that really focuses on open source program offices, and we um, we meaning the Chaos Project have recently joined the to do group as a, a associate member. So if you go to the there's I think six associate member projects right now with the to do group. And as part of that um, collaboration, we are having an, o an OSPO um, working group that meets on Thursdays. It wouldn't be a time that's convenient for you all, but it meets on Thursdays every other week to talk about metrics and metrics models that are relevant to open source program offices. Um, and so that's the combination that we have right now with the to-do group. And if Shoya, if you could make a connection with Anna, and I can help with that as well uh, on to do group Asia Pacific, that would be that would be amazing. Okay, um, this thought uh, because um, um, I oh, um, one thought is uh, it's just my personal feeling, but um, I kind of uh, feel that um, there is a considerable amount of interest from. Uh, like comes from the Asia Pacific is from um, folks comes from the OSPO in this region, just like folks on this call. <laughs> don't don't feel bad. There, there's different approaches in different parts of the world, and you know, don't feel bad about yeah. being effective and successful. <laughs> <laughs> no, that sounds that sounds great. Um, so why don't maybe um, an action item? Oh my gosh. An action item would be, have you reached out to Anna? Yeah, Anna is the community manager for the to-do group, just so you all know. Yeah. Um, is. I haven't talked about this um, with her, but I can send her an email and okay. um, CC you. Okay. I, I also know from before the before times, as we call them in the United States, before the pandemic, when I went to um the linux foundation um uh was it called the security i don't know if it was a security summit there was a open source summit in japan in december of every year open, and i open compliance the open summit. compliance summit yeah and I, I met i think i may have met some of y'all <laughs> um at that conference one year or another um there, there was a, certainly a, a, a good representation from both China and Japan and other Asian Pacific nations. And even this year, this is the first year they're trying to do it in person, but I still think there's difficulty getting into Japan and um, possibly difficulty getting out of some countries as well. So um, I think some of the feeling bad that you may have probably just arises from the fact that we never see each other um, right now, like or hardly ever see each other because of the restrictions that um, are widely faced. And the Asia Pacific region has certainly been hit harder. Um, and has, there, has the population more densely packed together, which affects the communicability. So like you're, we're doing, I, th I think you're doing, this is going great in the context of the fact that people still can't travel freely. And from what I saw at the compliance summit, um, the different countries will definitely start to come in as the, the pandemic recedes. So I just want to encourage you, like, I don't think it's yeah, anything you've done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, absolutely. So, you know, I'm the uh... I'm the board of the Open Chain Project rep represent Huawei, you know. So the Shane Kaufland, uh, he's the manager of the uh, Open Chain Project, you know. So he invites us to go to uh, Japan in Yokohama in yeah. December. Yep. December. Yep. December yep. 7th. Oh, yep. nice. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure. So, so I, this I, week, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, so. it's been in, it's been in Japan on December seventh before, and uh, for me as an American, one time I was so jet lagged, I, I I wanted to go looking for the Pearl Harbor site, realizing it was on it was not in Japan. <laughs> Only after I had a cup of coffee. 
um, maybe. So I, I'm not sure I can go there. So uh, it, it depends on the uh, in, uh, the pa pandemic, you know? Yeah, no, I mean, I think this year, year, yeah. this year will still be tough, I think, for in both directions, getting into Japan and leaving one's own country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So King, I do think you bring up a, a nice point too. I, I, <clears throat> I don't, I've thought about the, Oh, whoops. I've thought about the, hold on, I think Elizabeth just came in. Um, I've thought about the open compliance group and Shane, the work that Shane is doing as well. And I'm not, I, I'm not quite sure how we connect chaos with that quite yet, but that's also on my mind. I don't know if you have talked to Shane about that at all. So you know, uh, I, I have idea. So it can be uh, connect the chaos and the open chain, the license compliance project. You know, so uh, because the chaos is the matrix uh, of the uh, community health. You know, of course, the compliance license compliance is very important in the uh, open open source community. It is uh, like the open SSF. You know, the security security area. You know, area. So, uh, you know, uh, in uh, now in the in the market, uh, there are there are lots of the uh, ICA tools, tooling. You know, uh, the uh, it, it can be scanned the code, and uh, it come out. What well, well, it generates the uh, generate the uh, license risk. You know, and uh, uh, I I saw the. The chaos has the matrix matrix uh, uh, indicator on the license. For example, the fire license. Uh, yeah, we can uh, announcement the fire license. You know, so I think we can uh, co collaborate with the uh, the company like the uh, uh, Black Duck uh, for CID, uh and uh, the scanners, the SA tools. So. Uh, we can we can call the API uh, after the scan uh, the uh, 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 the show on our dashboard. So you know the Yehui has to uh, has to make the plan and uh, 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 and uh, the put the license in the uh, metric model in the productivity. Yeah, area, you know. We have um, augers. I made several auger presentations at the compliance summit about our license scanning, which is based on a project that happened at Nebraska Omaha probably 10 years ago now, um, where it produces it. We, we were able to produce an S bomb with an older version of SPDX um, in auger. And, and so that's one of the things that we, we do. And I, I can certainly put you in touch with. Um, uh, Matt Cantu and um, myself to to show you what how we're doing it. We're using the Nomo scanner from is it from Open Chain or Open Stack or Fossology? From Fossology. Fossology, yeah. Fossology, yeah. Fossology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's Fossology is the open source uh, tool uh, yep. for yeah. the scan. Yeah. They are also uh, another tooling uh, tools uh, like the scan code. Do you hear? Have you heard of that? Scan, scan, scan code. code. It's also the yeah. I say uh, C O C O D E scan code. It's also the open source uh, tool. Yep. Yeah. yep. It's pretty quick too. Scan code. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, also is... some uh, commercial company. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so, oh no, you're fine. Uh, no. Mean, no. <laughs> There are also some of the uh, commercial company uh, to supply the like the uh, like the black dot for scan scanners. Scanners is a, a Spanish company. You know? It can be also, there. There are also the SA tools. We can uh, connect with them. Uh, you know the scanners. The uh, scanners is S C A N O S S. Scanners is the first open source uh, commercial tools. You know in the world. Uh, so uh, Scanos uh, has established the STF uh, Software Transparency Foundation in the Europe. 
and uh, uh, we also join that uh, foundation. I think uh, we can talk with uh, the foundation, uh, STF foundation, you know. Uh, I've never heard and, of that. Uh, maybe, uh, no, okay. <laughs> yeah, STF, you can, you can search. Let, 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 let me give you the link, sorry. Yeah, I've never heard of that one. That's interesting. Yeah. So I think at the member summit on Monday, so I, do you all know the member summit is happening in this California? Week. Next week. Um, so I know that Anna is kind of organizing some to do folks around OSPOs. <clears throat> and one of the things I think we might want to ask is how can we coordinate the work of the associate affiliate members? Huh, I've never seen this one. Have you seen this, Sean? No, I haven't. Oh. It's nah. new tools and uh, 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 the the city uh, CEO of the the, the company. Uh, I know uh, his name is Alan Fist. Uh, he is uh, previously working in the Black Duck, you know. And uh, I uh, familiar with the CTO of the Scanners. Yeah. If you have any, uh, if I had any, uh, if I had, if you have any requirement, I can. I can link you and the scanners and all of the STF, you know. Yeah, I'd like I'm to be linked. To that. Yeah, I'd like to be linked to that. That's great. So, Shen, so you maybe you know, uh, you have my email? Um, King? Yeah, probably. <laughs> wouldn't hurt to send Some, it somewhere again. Somewhere in your system. Yeah, wouldn't hurt to send it again. Yeah, I'm not familiar with this at all. Interesting. No, okay, no. sure. It's in the chat, Sean. Yep, I grabbed it. I can I can be the bridge with you and the scanner. But it makes me wonder <clears throat> through all of this, like if I was to bring up, hold on a second. Um, If I was to bring up, <clears throat> this is the current associates in the to-do group. So I'm wondering if at the member summit, we should have a conversation about how the associates can work together <laughs> to help foster what the to-do group is trying to accomplish. So particularly chaos and open chain, I think there's a clear connection there. I think chaos and open SSF, there's a clear connection there as well. Mm -hmm. I know that uh, the Finos <clears throat> group, Sean, this is an email that you were on recently. I, I they, did respond to that. You did, yep. Yeah. But the Finos group, the they've been asking questions around what are the metrics we care about in, in the financial sector. Do you know what these are? ESOP, do you know what that is? I'm not familiar with this. So, so, yeah, I, I had some questions in my response email. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what ESOP is off the top of my head either. LF um, Okay, but maybe I can connect. Oh, with... yeah. We are... yeah. <laughs> okay, Matt. So I think uh, we need to connect with S SPDX. What do you think about the SPDX with Kale? Yeah, actually, I've been a longtime contributor to SPDX as well. So I know that community really well. Okay. Yeah, so I think maybe we should think about like how, um, not just from a, this is also for, for you, Shoya, like uh, around the to do group, like how not just chaos works with the to do group as an associate, but how the associates can help work together. In, in the to do group overall, so that we can assist the work that open chain is doing open SSF can assist the work that we're as an example that we can kind of assist each other. I'll talk to Anna about that. That's interesting. Uh, you know, I, uh, I'm in the open chain and the open SSF, the open chain and the open SSF uh, work group are also talking about the same 
same thing, you know. Perfect. <laughs> how to how we, connect with we, chaos? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to the group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Because I don't want to do the work that they're doing, and I suspect they don't want to do the work that we're doing. And if we can share the work amongst all of us, the best for everybody. Um, so it would be great. <clears throat> um, Sean, who is at Open SSF? That is that David Wheeler. Ed? David Wheeler is our my big uh, uh, insight provider into that community. Okay, so maybe David and Shane Coughlin from Open Chain and, and you and me, if they're all at Member Summit, we could organize that. Okay, cool. All right, great. Yeah, I just want to mention um, uh, a thing I observed is Open Chain. How Open Chain is doing a great job like promoting uh like sending all the um notifications and uh all the promoting works in the to do in the slack of to do group and they have a channel named um osvo compliance so okay. maybe yeah we also need a channel named uh, osvo yeah. metrics that's a good idea yeah there was actually a, a discussion and i think i haven't mentioned this in this group at uh, ospo Con live meeting I was in at Stockholm in two weeks two weeks ago, where there's a movement in some organizations to move the S the OSPO into under the uh, senior uh, the, the CSO or the security officer instead of the CTO the technology officer, and there's some for these reasons that you're you're discussing around around these issues, and there's resistance from developers. They want to be part of the CTO, which they regard as cool, and they regard the CSO as they're the security assurance organization as less cool. So there's a, I don't know, there's there's a developer, at least in the European and North American cultures, there's this developer lack of desire to be under the security organization for what that's worth. All right. Um, this is a good conversation. Thank you. Um, Shoya, I'll turn it back over to you. I, we might oh. be at this spot right here. Yeah, okay. I thought, uh, sorry, okay. I, I, may I give you a comment some, uh, about discussion? Okay. I suddenly remind that, um, think of the risk working group in our chaos community, because mm -hmm. it's all about compliance and, and the security things. Yeah, so it is. I think there's one opportunity that we can we can collaborate with the yeah, OpenChain and the OpenSSF in this meet, working group. We, in fact, uh, I help coordinate that working group, and we meet at one o'clock p.m. Central Time on Thursdays. And that that working group is actually we've been discussing lately um, compliance, um, security scanning, relationship to OSSF. Um, and, and all of the, the same kinds of topics, but in much more depth than we're able to get you to here. We spent, we probably spent a year uh, working through the complexities of how to describe software dependencies, for example, because um, it turns out those are a lot more complicated than you might think. And, uh, and I also think we can, we can Launch out a similar associate program with with those communities and their Linux Foundation together mm -hmm. to connect with a different working group who we we care about, like like a value uh, change to the OSPO. We focus on the OSPO and the risk. We we connect with uh, connect uh, risk uh, co co compliance and uh, security, and some evaluation connect with the developer things i think we may have more connections with those communities who care about the whole community operations and the governance and of yes. course our final output is the metrics and the metrics model in our community but um, it's it would be a be used and uh, and uh, be recognized by other communities. I think it's a really good thing. Mm -hmm. 
I agree. Oh. Yeah, go ahead, Shoya. I mean, I, I agree, Yehoda. Yeah. Um, and I think yes. these other communities. I agree are, too. I, when I, <laughs> my brain is really slow. Yeah, no, mine is as well. It's, <laughs> just, we had Halloween on Monday, and I think my brain is still slowing down from all that. I got a cold for about a week. Yeah. Um, I think that these communities like Open Chain and Open SSF are very amenable or very willing to to kind of um, take a look at the work that we're doing and recognize that work as well around metrics and metrics models. Yeah, I think there there are a lot of potential connections we need to build because there are a lot of uh, works overlapped with each other. So um, one of the things I, I just will say this: one of the things that we that we when we joined the associate program with the to do group that we were kind of attentive of is that we didn't want it just to be like we kept calling it like a logo exchange. We didn't want to just like you know like at, at a high level look like we were coordinating. And we also wanted to make sure that we weren't um, that we had members from their communities joining chaos as well. That it wasn't just chaos members going to all the open chain meetings and chaos members going to all the open SSF meetings and chaos members going to all these other meetings that we that we organize yeah. within chaos as well. So we need to that message has to be pretty clear. And Anna was very receptive to that, and that's why our value working group changed to the OSPO working group because that's that's where that work can occur within the chaos project, so. Yeah, and, and that's like Augur uses tools from us, um, OSSF, like their scorecard, for example. So they, they're really, these groups build tools that are targeted to specific needs and they may, they're pretty easy to implement as part of like a metrics model system as somebody suggested earlier. Um, you basically just drop the code in and wrap it in whatever language you're writing your code in because it's written in Go um, and and Go. Did, or King, did you have a comment? <clears throat> yeah, so I, I heard of the, the scorecard is uh, move very fast. Yes. And uh, it almost yes. gets to evaluate, uh, uh, evaluate, evaluate the more than 1,000 program, you know. Yeah, project in, in the GitHub, you know, it's 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 go very fast. So we will adopt the scorecard in our community, open source community, you know. Yeah, it um they're adding things to it, and uh, yeah, it, it's an extremely fast moving software project. Which which has implications for us because we often have to adapt to those changes quickly as well. They don't remove things, they just keep adding things. This is I great. Think... I like this. <coughs> Thank you. Go ahead, Shoya. Yeah, um, uh, I just want to have uh, the comment on scorecard is um is a, a, a huge advantage of the scorecard is is very practical and um, quantifiable. Yes. That Actually, in our metrics model, we have similar solutions, and uh, our advantage is that we have trending uh, to to trace up uh, to trace the, all the changes, not just a snapshot of the of the current status of, of for for one project. So, uh, I think we can learn from each other. Agreed. Yeah. I remember that conversation. Okay, uh, so um, now we move to the next next topic uh, is the the OSPO Summit APEC is initiated in China um, by the Linux Foundation APEC. Actually, I don't know much about Linux Foundation APEC. <laughs> I'm not sure if um, um, if is this is this a, an organizational community? Um, but uh, well, they are the 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 community members from this group um they are thinking of um Matt um, uh, do you want to share uh do you want me to share my screen um you can I was just whenever I was looking I think is that it's not the one in Japan for along with compliance summit because they have they no. have changed yeah, because they changed the name of the compliance summit to the Linux Foundation Summit Asia Pacific this year. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, and I, I don't I don't think this Osmo summit is uh, like uh, initiated by the official Linux Foundation because they are uh. Uh, kind of still uh, talking about this. But uh, but um, um, but they have reached out to me uh, like they want to get support from chaos the chaos community. Uh, so. Um, uh, it's kind of so. I just want to think, uh, think with you guys about this event, and um, uh, it's just like uh, uh, it will have the community logo exp exposed on the poster, and uh, also uh, it would be even great if um, like um, folks from the community will give uh, like one or more talks on that event, but. If I can make it, I I will also attend um, to that event that is by now temporarily settled in Beijing. So I don't think I, I'm not sure if this can really proceed because they really want to do it in person, but I think it's difficult right now. But that's the news. And I also share the docs uh, in the minutes and um, I will share it again. Um, okay. Uh, if you can see my screen, but it's in Chinese, so uh. <laughs> this is in Chinese, yeah. It's also, I think uh, the uh, community members from Chinese will know that it is initiated by Jian Sheng. Yeah. So this is just an open call that there is another um, OSPO related uh, um, events that will hope, ho hopefully happen in China at the end of this year. And Chaos will be uh, one of the like the support supportive organizations. So interesting. I I don't <clears throat> I put that link to the face like starting at the top. I put that link to the Facebook page for Linux Foundation Asia, Asia Pacific in the chat. Um, I didn't see anything on the official, like Linux Foundation site, so I'm not quite sure what. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm good with you. I think uh, it's not uh, the official organization now. Okay, uh, it's not maybe an official organization. It's like a, a group of people in the, the Pacific. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the, yeah, the general it's uh, like the. Uh, the OSPO ent enters the enterprise, the different enterprise. This time, uh, last year, they go into the Huawei, you know, and um, this uh, event may be hold, uh, this event may be hold on December 2nd, you know, and uh, uh, so they invite me to have the uh, have a speech on that event, you know. So uh, I, I don't know how, how can we, uh, how can we connect with with this uh, organization? So I'm, I'm not what, sure. You know. What just, kind of support we can provide to give a presentation or or give a re video, record a video for for this meeting or? Um. All uh, uh, like this even in person. You know? okay. Yeah, this event oh. is in person. So Wait, what Jian to... Shen? What he's asked? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, Xia. Uh, yeah, um, what Jian Shen, uh, what he needed now is just uh, like a brand exposure on the poster, um, but we can have more. Like uh, folks from the Asia Pacific, especially in China, if anyone who are interested and who can make it, it's even great to give some talks. So uh, I know uh, this founder has a contact person uh, named Yang Xuan uh, at Hong Kong, you know. Uh, who, who is so, this person? Because I know, <clears throat> I know this Xuan. person. So there's Nori. Do you know Nori? He's actually like, his title is the Vice President of Japanese Operations. Oh, no, not this guy. 
Oh, no, no, I didn't. I know that's not who you're talking about. I was wondering if there was a person who was like a VP of Chinese operations or something like that at the Linux Foundation. And Shoy, I will say if, if this does move virtually to Yahui's question, I'd be happy to provide a virtual presentation. That would be great. That, I think they are still discussing on that. Okay. And depending on your topics of focus, I'm happy to as well. But okay. just let us know. That, yeah, that would be great. They they would like uh, this event to be in person, but it might be difficult. <coughs> So I will keep you guys updated. Yeah, yeah. I just need like a week. Just give me a week and I can maybe even just a few <laughs> days and I can put something together. So. Yeah, assuming it's virtual. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But if it's yeah, face sure. to face, if, I, I don't know what it's like getting into China right now, but I imagine it's as difficult as getting into Japan. So I think these yeah. virtual things are, you know, we can cross our fingers, but. Thanks. Yeah, sure. Okay, so uh, so the last topic is um, we still have uh, several mi minutes, so um, I want to discuss like the potential paths for newcomers that are interested in the Asia, KLC Asia Pacific com community and um, how we can make them make them uh, like onboarding smoothly and um, what are the uh, the contribution areas that they can we, we can let them uh, onto that that those tasks and finally they can really become versed into a chaos member so I, I listed several of them uh, like uh, translation and mm -hmm. um, organizing events and uh, doing some outreach work and speak speak out on other events. Uh, and also there is a, one, uh, one of the main uh, thing I know Ye Hui is working on is matrix model and also the Compass um, platform. That's also the contribution area. And also uh, once we um, build the connection with uh, with to do group, uh, we can definitely have this OSPO related topic. Um, and also, um, I don't know why I list this here. Maybe it's appeared on the last <coughs> call. So it's just, um, uh, uh, and I don't, I, I'm not sure uh, how things are going with the project badging, but if there are like uh, reviewers for um, project badging, if we need reviewers, we can probably also involve the newcomers to become the reviewers. And also we can promote more and more projects from Asia Pacific to obtain the badges. I like this list, thanks. Yeah, yeah. this is I'm, really good. I'm wondering um, for for folks in, in China, I mean, it, it seems like there's a variety of different people who want to join. So. Like up until this point, we've been talking a lot about say open source program offices and connecting like open SSF and chaos and um, open chain. Like those are those are pretty uh, deep conversations for a newcomer <laughs> to be involved in, right? <laughs> you would have to kind of understand the landscape of open source. And so, I mean, that's possible that that we need to think about paths for folks from open source program offices, for example to join in the conversation of chaos. Um, there, there are also, I would imagine in China, students who want to participate in open source projects and like getting involved in, in things like the to-do group might just be a little too much. Yeah. The There's a lot to take in on that. Um, and so, right, so maybe we need to think about roles that different people could have and how they would want to join. Um, so I know like Leon, you know, you have a lot of students at the, at, at the university who may want to join yeah. correct. open yeah. source. And so we have, and they may want to join from, a like, a technology development perspective. They may want to join from a documentation perspective. It's 
So we might want to think about what those paths are for, for the different roles that we have and the different ways that people could, could, could participate. So my feeling is uh, for students, if we can assign some tasks to them, they will be, it will be easier for them to join. For example, the translation tasks, they can work very fast and then know what to do. And uh, now you can see my student just join and uh, lead the com uh, conversation this night. And uh, probably, I think it's because she does not know what, what to do here. So maybe so some clear no, task, idea. tasks with clear goals. Well, I like that. It looks like in the chat, yeah. that's, that's what um, Thank you. that's what Chaos Africa is doing as well. Just kind of assigning clear tasks to newcomers from Africa. So do you think that the students are interested in, in technical tasks or do you think it's, it's just to get involved in open source? You know, like what's the motivation to, to want to join an open source project? Oh. Uh... I think uh, first of all, or they need to be self motivated. They will, they need to be interested in the topic we are talking about in chaos. And uh, for computer science students, uh, at least in Nanjing University, I think they are more interested in technical tasks. Okay. Yeah. I think I think if we have a chance to give to provide good enough data, uh, I mean the real world community data to to our um, um, students and professors and uh, let them focus on the people's behaviors in the community, they create they would create more values for, for our communities because I think this is their professional way to doing in, in the university. I think we can re reuse or utilize uh, their capability about this area to help us to build more uh, meaningful metrics model and metrics and even the mechanism and uh, behind those metrics models. So what if we ran, um, I put something in the minutes, listening to both of you talk, um, something like a, when you say provide students with meaningful data, um, would it be about kind of asking the students to tell stories from that data, what they could understand from a health perspective? Because I'm thinking maybe we could run. Maybe we can give them some anonymous <clears throat> data about some communities. Mm -hmm and uh, that they trace up those communities, uh, the whole life cycles, also including some uh, even uh, specific uh, uh, things. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the behaviors and behind this uh, event, for example, some community events like uh, Summit or, or Meetup online or offline. Yeah, there's, I've used, um public repositories like nonprofit repositories or open source scientific repositories where they're not there's not a corporate competitive issue associated with sharing the data um for these kinds of events just so they, they have competitions Sorry, sure. yeah yeah so i just put in there like what if we had a, a data thon we'd have to think through it a little bit but i'm running a similar project right now with a large bank here in my city where they're providing students with large data sets around customer transaction data mm -hmm. to ask questions and tell stories about that data and maybe we could do something similar with university students from across mm -hmm. the globe to to provide large data sets, um, kind of point them to the metrics and the metrics models to orient them around stories that you could tell mm -hmm. around that data. Um, but really ask them, yeah, I think it's, it might be a cool idea and ask them to, to tell stories about, 
how they understand the health of communities or the health of of the projects that that are presented to them. I have to think through it a little bit more, you know, like what we would ask. Um, but then they would actually present the results to a panel yeah. of folks and yeah, I did there was a Phil when I lived in Philadelphia, they had these these same kinds of events where people would be given data sets or problems. And exactly. You'd have a weekend to solve it and <clears throat> you know. Well, in, in the case of the the bank that we're working with right now, they actually have mentors from the bank. So we could have mentors from the community that would be like, you know, it's like a two week kind yeah. of thing. Well, the mentors are essential, right? Because no one else can give context for the data. Exactly. Right. And they have somebody to ask questions to. Yeah. If need. yeah. It's like, yeah. What, what am I looking at? So I know we're out of time, but this is something to think about. I'd never thought about this. And it might be a nice way, listening to this conversation for students, <clears throat> to start just getting involved yeah. in the chaos project as a, as a nice ramp for them. Yep. For sure. All right, I have to jump. I have another meeting after this. Yeah, yeah. So, so good to see everybody. Always, it's good to see everybody. See you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks, Shoya. You did a great job. Thank okay. you. <laughs> bye. Bye. Bye.